my dad bought this place for my grandpa. So my grandpa, Alan Benz Miller, he owned this place before us. We've been living here for the, well, I don't know, 25 or so years. Uh, when Vern came here, we had basically all barbed wire fencing. It was, there was the old house. This barn didn't exist. Um, quite a few things weren't here. So we built a lot in the last eight or nine years. So it's been nice. This is the best place to be. It was nice because it was close to mom and dad's. So we could just ride our ponies to dad's at, or to papa's house and then go back to dad's house. And it was nice. We'd come over for a visit and drove lots of horses out of here. And yeah, it's been pretty cool to be here. So the old garage is still here and it looks exactly the same. And then the old barn that grandpa used to train out of, it's still here, but we resided it. It used to be an old red barn and now we resided it. And it looks pretty nice. It's got to match everything else, so it looks nice. Sienna has chickens in there, so we have some chickens, and then the kids put their saddle horses in there. They just kind of hang out, and there's an old barn loft. They love playing in it. Barn lofts are super cool. I store my Christmas decorations up there, and yeah, it's pretty cool to have the old barn there. So. The first year Burn was here, we started with the four pipe fences out there, and then this barn. And then every year, we basically just more fences and more fences and now this whole property basically besides the acreage or the acres on the other side of the water it's all pretty much pipe and we have it all painted white it's super nice it's lots of work though <laughs> now that it's up it was an honor to be able to get his place because i know he broke a lot of horses here people used to say oh he was one of the best horsemen ever and i know he did good wake racing and helped my dad out lots and it was nice that dad was close so they could work together so we were here a lot like a lot and it's just, yeah, it's nice to be able to carry on the family tradition here. And yeah, it's kind of cool. When my grandpa first bought this place, he paid a thousand bucks with an eight milk cow. So that's kind of a cool story. I was, wasn't even born, I don't think. <laughs> if my grandpa could see this place now, he'd be amazed. He love this barn because it's huge and clean and to keep it looking nice. And if he could see that house, he would be amazed too because he had nine kids and they lived in a two bedroom house. So we kind of lucked out and we have a seven bedroom house right now with well, nine, there's nine of us all together. Not everybody lives at home anymore, but yeah, it's a pretty big house. I think it's been, uh, I don't know, nine or so years now since I moved here. And uh, when I come in here, uh, Lisa was living on the farm here. Her, you know, her dad had the place. And uh, since then, her and I, we, we, you know, established a house and a barn and uh, purchased the land from him now. And uh, so, yeah, it's ours. Now and we just we enjoy being here. It's got some history behind it, and uh, it's home. We, you know, we had the the old house was here, and we had decided to put the new house on. And uh, I had a neighbor that with a, a construction outfit and some equipment, and he uh, took the old house down and uh, got the basement hole dug. And um, when I returned home from racing that fall, I jumped on the cement work and got it done and brought the um, our construction crew at that time I was working with brother Shane and another partner and uh, and we brought that crew down and framed up the house and away we went yeah I, I kind of had a, a vision in my mind what I wanted for a barn um, actually I think back of the scenario and it was uh, we built this barn before we built a new house so typical wagon driver fashion it's horses first and uh, we, yeah, we built this barn. We were still living in the old house on the property at the time and uh, got some fences built, some pipe fences and stuff. And then uh, once that was all taken care of and the horses were, you know, where we could look after them properly, properly to compete at a, at a higher level, then we worried about the house. Yeah, we got some new ones last fall. We went to a few racetracks around and I think we ended up with six new ones. And um, I got one in the outriding pen and the rest are driving and, um, as far as the old horses go, it's pretty much the same old crew I had last year and um, the out riding horses, is, uh, there's one new one in there and uh, yeah, we're just hoping like every year, your hopes and dreams are all on your pen of new horses and um, I feel pretty fortunate with what I got out this year and uh, um, you know, as a rule, you break out six or seven horses and if you get two that, you know, are re ready to compete the first year to help you out is a pretty good odds and this year they all went to work so we're pretty pumped up about how the new ones turned out. Well, that outfit we had in town this morning to uh, train it was two there was two new ones on there two first year horses and uh, 
and two of my older crew. Um, actually, the the, hor the horse that was on left lead was a, is a new horse this year. Um, and the right wheeler that was on there this morning is a new horse. I got one of my good old, la or my good old righties, they're the right leader. He's uh, my short barrel right leader that I've used for the last, you know, 10 years. And um, the left hand wheeler is one of my good left leaders that I put back to uh, help train some of these new ones. So we move them around and, you know, keep everybody awake. And it's, it's just a part of the training process. And um, when I get the GP, will them two new horses be on there? Probably not, but uh, this is what we got. You know, the more hooks you can get on them now and we'll, you know, do lots of training in the morning and stuff there. And for the first uh, early part of the season in the morning, we'll do some driving with them new ones and keep them going and hopefully have them that we can fit them in a race or, you know, two before Calgary and use them some in Calgary. The left leader we had on there this morning, uh, that, that, you know, he's a first year horse this year. Um, uh, one thing you, you'll notice about him uh, when you watch him drive, he's, he, he carries a big line, he's pretty aggressive. Uh, I think, uh, you know, shows a lot of, you know, he, he's an athlete. And as uh, um, soon as I started breaking the horse out, I could see that a little bit about him. And I thought, well, he's going to the lead and that's where we put him and he hasn't looked back. He just gets every trip, he gets better and better. I mean, obviously we haven't got him in a race yet or whatever and we're still kind of rolling on with him and just trying to you know get up teaching him the horn and stuff but as far as driving and uh, coming back to the track and just keep it cool you know what a lot of them new horses you start running them and they go backwards too the pressure gets to him a little bit and this guy he just keeps his cool and he just shows us more in every trip so we're excited about him the right the right wheeler was the other new horse and uh, he just same thing kind of from the word go when we started breaking him he showed the you know the the his his demeanor was a right wheeler and and uh, he he just kept in that position I kept driving him and he just kept getting better and better he you know he, he follows the lead team good and uh, uh, his respect for the pole is good and everything so you know the two horses we got some hopes for and we'll just see how they turn out horses along the road there um, are all my old wagon horses like the, the crew that's ready to go I shouldn't say all of them there um, I got about four or five paddocks in the yard here and I as a rule I don't like to put more than four horses in one you know I like keeping small bunches because I do lots of feeding outside so um, I, I I don't know if there's a seniority to the pens or not my old crew my good outfit stays at the top of the hill there by the spruce trees um, and after that, it's just, you know, whoever whoever gets along best, I uh, I don't put him in his outfits. It's just the horses, the buddies go together and we try to keep everything relaxed and calm and happy. And um, I think we achieve it pretty good with our pen system here. Yeah, royal purple has been our color from, you know, I think it's been probably 10 years or more. Um, we had a sponsor at the time that, that wanted the royal purple and uh, I don't know, I, I think I doubted it a little bit at the time, but the wife, she talked me into it and we got a house full of girls here and, and they all thought it was all right. And then, you know, you go back to the history of wagon racing and there was some, uh, I think George Norman was purple. I know the father-in-law, like Buddy, carried purple and... Um, you know, all of a sudden it's, it, it works and uh, it's worked for us. We, you know, I, I like the color on the bay horses. I got all, a whole pen full of bay horses here and, and uh, the purple goes good with them. So, um, yeah, we, we, we try to keep, you know, our equipment looking nice all the time and uh, that's priority for me. This year we're struggling a little bit with uh, just, you know, getting equipment in. We're trying to get ready to go here and um, rehalter everything and you know find enough shanks and stuff like that that uh, mysteriously goes missing through the winter and stuff but um, it's been a bit of a challenge this year uh, just things are on back order I'm not sure why it's it, it's it's showing up all over the country if it's not vehicles it's you know stuff in hardware stores and that and we're finding the same challenge for this stuff I mean as a rule I go grab 20 you know new halters for the start of the year, make everything freshen up and that. And here we are this year washing halters and not having a tough time getting this stuff. So, um, you know, we, we just, you do what you have to do and uh, 
like I said, it's it's been a priority of mine to these horses look good and I'm fussy with my stuff and and my family is too, so uh, we'll, we'll make it work somehow. We're excited this year, um, head, heading back to Grand Prairie. Um, you know, some, some good things came out of uh, out of last year, out of uh, from 2020, uh, there was so much uncertainty in the sport, and you know, sponsorship was hard to find, which was understandable. I mean, companies were hurting; they weren't in, you know, a lot of them weren't being productive at the time, and and that, and uh, we we stumbled upon a sponsor um, by the name of Chad McCaw, and he owns uh, McCaw's Drilling and Blasting, and. Uh, and you know got to know chad he gave me a call one day i was i think i was in bonneville we were racing in bonneville and the phone rang and he's like you know tells me who he is and and wondering if i needed a sponsor for rocky mountain house and i said yeah i hadn't actually i hadn't planned on um going to rocky you know the way the schedule was it was it was optional to the drivers to to, to go or to stay home last year or just to help guys you know get get back and on track and get some money made and so I agreed to go to Rocky Mountain House and carry his tarp and uh, it just kind of all snowballed from there. Then we went to, after that, Chad, he tells me, you know, go on to Pinocchio and I'll, I'll take you there too. So we did and and then, uh, you know, got to know him as a friend and, and over the last, you know, half a year or, or you know, we uh, became good friends, the family friends, you know, and um, Chad's wife, Robin, you know, a great lady, and we just, you, you, they're family now, and uh, they're, they, they're supporting us this year going down the road. He took the whole season, so we're pumped. It, it, you know, they're a good company to, to represent, and I just hope we can make them proud.